Hi all, Aid from Rev Monkey here. Today's video is about driver's cars. What is a driver's car? What makes them special? What makes them so alluring? And more importantly, have you or I got one? I've got three nice manual cars. But is a manual a prerequisite to being a driver's car? Let's find out in this video as I go into more detail. Now, if you're watching this video, you understand cars, you have a passion for cars. You're the kind of person who will go out, get in a car and go for a drive for the sake of it, because you enjoy cars. Cars to you are fun. This video though is specifically about a driver's car. Is a driver car that just makes you feel that fun? Is a driver's car lightweight? Is a driver's car powerful? Is it fast? Let's delve into it in more detail. Now I checked quite a lot of uh, authoritative websites out there. And uh, if one thing is clear, is that the definition of a driver's car is not clear. Everybody's got their opinion. There's a few common factors that pop up time and time again, but actually it's quite different. It's really quite interesting. So car throttle, they say a car that sacrifices very little in the pursuit of speed with very few greater comforts. It should be focused. It should be the best it can be at being a very pure experience. Focused on going fast, not trying to make everyone happy. Now, a lot of that I completely get. Focus is important. What I don't mention is fun and engagement. Speed, that could be a factor, yeah. A driver's car. Is speed actually important? Is it really a factor? Certainly outright speed isn't. And as that brings into play lots of stuff, like Teslas, for example. You couldn't call a Tesla a driver's car. Seriously. Now, Jam Jar, they said the car should be unusual, as in not common, unusual and gives satisfaction behind the wheel. That's pretty simple. Unusual in that it's not commonplace. It's not an everyday thing, so it's something more special. I get that. And it gives satisfaction behind the wheel. Okay, that covers a lot. That covers everything from, from fun and engagement through to just the thrill of driving a car. So I suppose unusual and satisfying is actually very short, very good synopsis. But it's very subjective. Now, the problem with what I believe a driver's car is, or what you believe a driver's car is, or what another person believes it is, could be completely different. For example, I wrote down a couple of key words here. I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm going to read them out. Are these factors that are important to you as for a driver's car? Power, handling, balance, feel, fun, noise, lightweight, engagement, speed, overall dynamics, not insulated from experience and no automation in place. Interesting. Moving on to car wow's definition. A car that is fun to drive puts a smile on your face. Hmm. That's probably it for me, but it's a generalisation. We'll come back to that. Consummated driver, I like this one. Well, this is different. Challenging or rewarding. It has to be driven hard. It's not suitable for a beginner. You've got to push the car to get the most out of it. They also say no driver's car can be front wheel drive. They do say it has to be at least rail wheel drive or all wheel drive with a bias towards the rear. Other ones that are spotted on forums. A driver's car is a car you have to drive with minimal or almost no driver aids. That's a common theme. So people hark back to really basic cars like Aerial Atom, Lotus Elise, cars that are clearly have very little electricery. Someone else said, has to be a manual. Okay, the three cars in the thumbnail for this video, my three main cars, Lotus Amira, this 94 Carrera GT, I mean to Grali, just there, they're all manual cars. I believe manual cars are more special, but I also believe DCT cars are more fun. But does having a manual car, is that a requisite to being a driver's car? I don't think so. 
I, I kind of did until I did a bit more research. And I've obviously had some fast DCT-based cars, or e-gears, for example. But they still get a lot of engagement by that kind of movement. I think the key difference is to what makes a driver's car with DCT is that you feel something. If it's too smooth, there's absolutely no point. You're not doing anything. But the com... Ugh. Turn that around there. Your argument is, well, if you're driving a car, you've got to be using a steering wheel, accelerator, brakes, and this third pedal, it's called a clutch for those who don't know, on the left. You push it in and you change your gear. You are driving the car. So some people believe that actually a driver's car has to be manual. It's to do with the overall engagement of a car. Interesting, what do you think? Uh, someone else said that the car has to be lightweight and focus on how that lightweight makes or adds to the dynamics of the car. Again, aerial atom, Lotus Elise, Caterham's. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that's a driver's car. But is it a driver's car because it's lightweight or because it's focused? Or just it ticks so many boxes because most of them are indeed manual. Very interesting. Now, one example of a car that came out in all of this as being one of the best driver's cars is the old 911 2.7 RS. I'll stick a picture up. Beautiful car, highly desirable, highly expensive. Now this demands otherworldly driver input to get the most out of it. It's quite old school, power's up top. You've got to work at it. You really feel you've got to drive the car. You've got to come out of that car with a sweat. Is that a driver's car? We have to really work at getting the most out of that car. Similar to one of the company's comments. I went on Evo. A list of cars for each category they come up with as driver's cars, including Fiesta ST, Civic Type R, Toyota GR86, 718 Spider, BMW M5 CS, can't read that. Oh, MC20, <laughs> what's a Mozo, what's a Mozo? <laughs> and Huria, obviously that's going for a kind of cheap up to the top end. I mean, wait, can you honestly say that an Aventador, that's quite a heavy car, is not a driver's car because it's heavy. You can't. So uh, we're getting no nearer what it means. But I think those short, sharp, sweet ones, the generalizations are probably the only ones that are really true. It's a car that is fun to drive. For me, it's a car that as I walk to the car, I start getting excited. I'm not going to go in that car and go down to shops. I'm going in that car to have fun. That to me is a driver's car. It's about the feeling. The feeling I have as I see the car, the feeling I get by looking at the car, knowing what it's going to do for me as an experience. Now, it's the feeling of the car itself. It's how it all connects together. A driver's car for me is how it steers, how the balance feels, how the car feels alive when you steer. That's down to good steering. That's common in cars like the Crema GT, the Integrale and the Amira. A manual gearbox, I'm not going to throw <laughs> that one in again but uh, I think it adds to the experience of driving a car but not necessarily makes it a driver's car what does make it a driver's car is good brakes you can't have fun in the car for brakes to shit they've got to be good to give you that confidence and also the handling the car's got to feel alive it's got to go through your body you've got to feel the car as one with you you've got to feel like you're driving the car now that rules out a lot of modern cars and I don't particularly like some of the BMW N cars or the fast, you know, RS6 sort of thing. I think they're a little bit, certainly the M4, a little bit anaesthetic. The car is half driving you. Like a GTR, Skyline. I mean, people know they're great cars, but it's in no way or form I believe that's a driver's car. I think it's got too much aids going on. You can go in it and you can drive fast. It doesn't make it a driver's car. So interesting to hear what your thoughts. What do you believe a driver's car is? It could be a short sentence. It could be a couple of words. But interesting to hear your thoughts. And as we look down all the comments, I'll probably start to get a better picture of what a driver's car means to you lot. So uh, please leave a comment. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, like it. If you have liked this content, please give it a like. It really helps the algorithm. 
Got lots of new content coming up on some fabulous supercars that I've been allowed access to. Uh, more on that soon. Until then, until that moment, get in your car, have fun. For you, it's likely a driver's car. Aid out.